Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with John Swanson of Synopsys. We're going to talk today about 1.6 terabit Ethernet. John, when we first started with Ethernet, this was 10 megabits per second. Now we're into 1.6 terabits per second. What's changed? What's driving this? And what are some of the things you have to worry about when you're working with this? Well, 1.6 terabit is kind of the next wave. Uh, it'll eventually be based on a 224 gig PAM4 or potentially PAM6 certes. Uh, the challenges are going to be moving the data that fast. Uh, so, you know, if you know the la layers of Ethernet, there's the Mac and the PCS. Uh, there's going to be big challenges in exactly how you take the data off the line at these rates and move it into the systems. So switches will be the first target uh, for this application. It's almost like everything has to catch up to this speed here, right? Yeah, I mean, you have to, you'll have to build out. There'll be new build outs and new hardware. Uh, but I think the bigger challenge is even with a speed, you know, we need more data centers. So the demand, you know, for the data storage and you know, all the the machine communications and AI applications that are running are not just creating more data, but they're creating very complex data that has to go into these data centers as well. Let's drill down into this. Sure. John, what are we looking at here? Well, this is a chart I put together that kind of shows, you know, how Ethernet has changed over time. I mean, you go back to the early days when it was 10 meg, which as you can see lasted quite a while, Moved to you know 10 100 one gig, which was the standard for a long time, uh, and then for data centers, you know the 10 gig came out. If you kind of look where Ethernet has really you know exploded, look at all of the new standards that have come out to support different applications. So automotive, you know, which is a HPC platform on wheels today, uh, generating tons of data um, using faster rates. But for the 1.6 terabit, you know, this is really going to be focused on the data centers. Uh, and there's some big challenges coming up. So you can kind of see these two spaces are merging together. Uh, the traditional sort of endpoint type stuff is getting faster and faster. And the high end uh, is also getting faster and faster. And when you're talking data center, this is not just the cloud, right? It's also all the edge data centers that are going to uh, crop up along the way. Oh, of course. And, you know, there's all the HPC requirements, which will influence uh, the type of data center. Uh, you know, is the application memory intensive? Uh, is the data local versus having to be brought into the system? All of these things are going to be considered in this next wave of, of data centers and, and compute platforms. I, I tend to kind of lump them together because I think they are merging together. Uh, you know, data center is not just storage. It's a giant computer farm that runs applications as well as has you know, the memory. There's a whole push to move a lot of the processing much closer to the source in order just to reduce the amount of it. That's still not going to be enough though, right? We still have to move lots of data. We still move lots of data. And when you're, when you're moving things to the source, one of the reasons is often latency uh, to, to keep things closer, right? You don't have to travel as lo the long haul as much. Uh, but yes, if we can move the com compute power closer to where you're trying to solve a problem, we solve the problem there locally, but these things tend to still want to put their data back up into the cloud. Uh, I mean, just think of you know, something simple like how a cell phone uh, is used, and people don't even think about it. You know, you're doing everything locally, but you know, it still syncs with the cloud, and that's why all your pictures are there and your messages and all the information that you could lose if you dropped your phone. What are we looking at here? Is this all about the data growth that we have to deal with? It is. Uh, it's sort of a summary of several different reports, uh, both from the IEEE bandwidth assessment uh, and, and some other reports uh, as well. Uh, but you just look at it from you know, 2017, that average traffic per user per month was 29 gigabit. Uh, in 2022, it's 85. And this is going to continue to grow. And it's not just data, it's the type of data, machine to machine, uh, and data center to data center communications as well. Uh, so lots of parallel computing, latency is important. Uh, and you know, latency can very much impact the user experience. Another reason why things sometimes get pushed to the edge.
there was a period of time where everybody thought Ethernet would fade out and be replaced by something else. It seems to have come roaring back. What what's different? What's changed? Uh, I have to think it's you know a it's a really good standard, uh, but it's evolved over time. I mean, if you think of what Ethernet was, you know, in the '90s versus what it is today. I mean, I actually remember I, I triple E meeting when audio video bridging first started coming out where we thought they should create a new cable because, you know, the big ethernet cable that drives, you know, long haul distances was not what you needed in the stereo. Uh, but at the time there was one ethernet plug and that's all there could ever be. Now over time being more receptive to uh, the market needs, uh, IEEE's evolved the standard. And so it's a good standard that's evolved to keep up with market demand and it's backwards compatible. I mean, you can go into your electronic you know, collection and find an old ethernet device and assuming there's still drivers for it, you can plug it into an ethernet port and it will still work. And that's a very powerful thing uh, in high technology. This is also leading to some new architectures, right? We're starting to hear things like memory pooling and server pooling as well, where you need all this processing. The, the challenge there is to be able to move this data around fast enough with low enough latency in order to make all that work. Uh, correct. And it's, it's, it's actually more than an ethernet problem, right? I mean, 1.6 terabit moves a lot of the data, but you also need to think of what's going on inside the box and how that will change the architectures as well. PCI Express, CXL, you know, the connections inside the box, uh, you know, Gen 6, PCI Express, imminent at this point, more bandwidth, you know, more data moving faster inside the boxes. And so it needs to get outside the boxes. Uh, for latency requirements, yeah, 1.6 helps a lot. And again, part of it comes down to how you design the data center. You know, are things more localized? Can you mix the memory and compute instead of a traditional you know, compute rack, compute rack and memory racks, you can start mixing things uh, to keep them closer together and organizing the data so the different applications have you know, easier access to it. Can we as an industry keep up with the amount of data that's coming through? Well, we have to, but you know, we, we've not done a good job of forecasting it. Uh, and you know, the future, uh, clearly, there's a lot we can do. So you know, I like this, this chart here. Uh, if you look on the, uh, the left side, uh, it was the forecast from 2014 through 2017 of 40 and 100 gigabit ethernet. And if you look at the actual data, look how far off the forecast was. Right, you know, this is seven million versus you know, one million or two million. Uh, so not only off on the volume, but on the speeds as well. There was more 100 gigabit Ethernet in 2017 than was forecast for all of the high-end Ethernet. And then if you look at the right, you know, this is from the IEEE bandwidth assessment. If you normalized everything out in 2017 and, and just go forward to 2025, you can see with 800 gig, which is being deployed today we're way off and 1.6 terabit you know which is coming still there's a huge demand so there'll be a lot more data centers being built which means we need to design for low power and things like that as well so big challenges uh, in both the architecture of the data centers and keeping up with the amount of data that we're processing put this in perspective for us when you're dealing with a designing a data center what actually changes there with 1.6 ter terabit ethernet the biggest changes uh, are, are going to be, if you think of a switch, you know, where there's 56 terabit switches being designed based on 100 gig certies. If we want to double that, which is what the next wave will be, uh, you couldn't do that with 100 gig certies. You know, the, the dies get too big. Uh, there's chiplets and other approaches being, being considered. Uh, but with the 200 gig certies, you, know, you can do this. The so physical challenges are immense, and that's something that you know we're actually able to spend a, a fair amount of time on. But you also need to think of you know what's the application that you're going into. Uh, if you're just you know creating this is an uh, example of an 800 gig subsystem. If you're just doing you know a point to point connection, and you own both ends of the connection, then maybe you know you can say I only want an 800 gig link. And so you would only need, you know, this part I show highlighted up here in yellow uh, and the appropriate PCSs to, to interface to the uh, 30s. But if you're building a switch, you don't always know what's on the other end. 
right? And so Ethernet by you know, design has supports the auto negotiation. So maybe a 10 gigabit link needs to be supported, you know, maybe 25, maybe multiple 10s, multiple 25s. Uh, and so what you see here is just basically an 800 gigabit design uh, that supports multiple configurations. You could do an eight by 10 gig, you could do four by 200, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what your application is. And this is an area where the chip designers can really tailor their chips for the applications they're targeting. Uh, and it's why Nix, I think you've seen such an explosion in the network interface card technology from you know, simply connecting to a PCI Express bus uh, to offloading the, the processors to actually you know, running AI applications on the data as it's coming through and you know, lots of other things as well. What do chip makers and system designers really need to think about as we started adding in 1.6 terabit ethernet? From a chip design point of view, you know, I think the 224 gig PMAs are a given at this point. Uh, that's clearly one of the things which is going to come out of the IEEE. Whether it's PAM4 or PAM6, uh, you know, will sort out over time and that will impact the PCS. The bigger challenges for the chip designers is going to be the Mac. Uh, because as we've gone, you know, quickly from 10, 10 gig up to you know, 100 gig to 400 and 800. What we've typically done is we make the clocks run a little bit faster and we make the data paths a little bit wider. Uh, to go from 800 to 1.6 terabit, it's probably not going to continue to work. Uh, yeah, we could put together a simulation, simulate it, but it would, physically building it would be very, very difficult. Uh, so there's going to be huge problems in the back. And this was identified by the IEEE early. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we're certainly working on. The other big challenges is the FEC. Uh, we've talked about latency several times in this. And, you know, the, the big hit in, in Ethernet is the uh, FEC. Uh, and if we can come up with more efficient, lower latency ways to do that, there's still a penalty, but we need to, you know, we need to support it. I talked a little bit about one, you know, the, the next generation of switches, which, Silicon will probably be out around 2024, uh, which means the designs are taping out next year. Uh, so these are problems that need to be solved quickly. We won't wait for standards. If you follow the IEEE, you know, we don't necessarily move real fast uh, in the IEEE, but we develop very good standards. Uh, and, you know, early adopters will be, will be doing 1.6 terabit based on 100 gig 30s. That is going to get ratified this year. Uh, so you have a IEEE standard for the 30s. We can do a by 16 link, which is not economically ideal. Uh, but if you're, you know, the big data center providers, it's it's manageable uh, to do those kind of things while the 224s get uh, a little more standard. Consortiums like, you know, the Ethernet Consortium, which published the 800 gig standard, will continue to be involved in this. Uh, and OIF kind of blazing the trail, I think, uh, trying to be ahead of everybody, and there'll be designs for that. Uh, so lots, lots is going to change for the designers, and you, you add this to the complexities of the geometries that we're building these things on. Does this also allow you some flexibility in, in terms of what you're doing inside the data center? So you think about, uh, it was always close proximity box to box would reduce the, the time it takes, uh, the latency. To, uh, for, for data to get from one machine to another. But now you can start saying, oh, we don't need to run every machine or we don't need to run another part of the data center. We can now move data for almost freely dependent upon what, wherever it has to move within a data center. So if you wanna save machines, you wanna uh, partition the, the workloads, you can still do that with this, right? Oh, certainly, certainly. I mean, again, ethernet's about moving the data. I mean, that's fundamentally what we're doing. And the less you have to move the data, the lower latency, you know, that's better for HPC compute. Uh, doubling the speed lets us move the data faster between the boxes when we need to. Uh, but again, you know, fundamentally, Ethernet's the box-to-box -box interface for these data centers. John Swanson, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time.